Hi, everybody. I'm Josh Welsh, president of Film Independent. Welcome to a very special edition of Film Independent Presents. Um, before we get started, I want to thank uh, some of our supporters, uh, the HFPA and Vision Media for making Film Independent Presents possible as our year-round program. And also a huge thanks to Netflix for making today possible. Um, it is my enormous pleasure to welcome to Film Independent Presents the two leads of Heartstopper, Joe Locke and Kit Connor. Joe and Kit, thank you so much for being here today. Thank you for having, thank you for having us. It's a pleasure. Okay. I understand you're both busy in, in production and, and we'll get to that in a minute, but I just want to kick things off by saying, and I'm sure you have heard this a million times, but your, the show season one, when it came out, registered with people here in the US so immediately and so profoundly, like it was the show that all at once people in my life, like all different kinds of people from my 15 year old daughter to my coworkers to friends, who like all different kinds of movies were like, have you seen Heartstopper? It was like the show that everybody wanted to watch all at once. And um, it just had such, I mean, I think it's because the show is so well made. You guys are fantastic in it. The whole cast is great, but it was also the moment that it landed where I just think it affected people emotionally in a very particular way at that moment. Um, I'm, I, I hope you've heard this because I think it's, I know my experience is not unique in that. But it really, it really registered with people at a time when they needed this kind of show. So thank you for that. Um, but I'd love to go back to the beginning and ask both of you how you, um, how you came to be in the show. Um, Kit, maybe starting with you, how did, how did you learn about the show? How did you, what was the audition process like? Well, it was a, a pretty normal audition process for me, certainly at the beginning, in the sense that I got, you know, an email from my agent uh, telling me that there was this this project happening and an and opening for a, a self-tape. Uh, and, you know, there was a pretty basic sort of synopsis of it, along with the link to the webcomic for Heartstopper. And I immediately read through probably the first volumes worth of Alice's um, novels and was just like, this is something that's really, um, you know, really special and really something that I'd love to be a part of. And, um, you know, there was a beautiful scene that was, that was paired with it to, to, to try. Uh, and I really actually enjoyed, you know, the audition process and sending in that self tape. I originally auditioned for, for Joe's character, Charlie. And um, yeah, it's, it was a really kind of, really actually quite, you know, fun audition process going through. I had a Zoom meeting, chemistry read with Joe, which was very weird having a chemistry read on Zoom. Um, you know, it, our chemistry must have been very good that they could see it over <laughs> Zoom. But um, yeah, and then we finally had a, our, our kind of final meeting as a, as a as a main ensemble cast. And it was great. Overall, it was a really actually very enjoyable casting process, which isn't always the case. Mm -hmm. Joe, how about for you? My, my understanding is this is your first filmed role. Yeah, and yeah. How did you learn about the, the project and have the opportunity to audition for it? Um, well, they did an open call for Heartstopper, which is where people who don't have agents or representation or haven't worked in the industry before can audition to I think one of the main things they wanted to do when with Hearts Double was create very like authentic casting and very true to the comics and a family friend saw the open casting was like you need to go for this you literally look exactly like the character and I'd always been interested in acting and it's something that was like it was one of my big passions but never thought that I would ever be able to break into the industry because I'm from a tiny island in the middle of nowhere in the UK and I'd seen so many of my incredibly talented friends go off to drama school in, in London and sort of have to come back four years later because London's so expensive to live in and they haven't been in the right place in the right time and I never thought that I'd be able to do that and so when Heartstopper came along it was very amazing but I, mean, I did a self-tape it was the first ever self-tape I did and it was like my phone on like 10 books in my room and it was very, very funny to look back. And I probably would look back and watch that and like cringe out of my body because I'm 
think the, act, the way I act now is very different to then. But then we did three or four Zoom chemistry reads with Kit. Um, and then, um, yeah, and then we did an in-person one. And yeah, that was, the rest is history. So I'm curious, before, once you were both cast, um, before shooting started, did you have a rehearsal period? Did you have time where you got to hang out and just spend time together? Um, not that you necessarily need that, but the chemistry between the two of you, just the, the on-screen relationship is so powerful and compelling. And I'm just curious, like, you know, how much time did you actually spend together before you were actually in front of camera? Yeah, I mean, I think that we had, uh, it must've been about a two week period that we had in rehearsals, which was, I found invaluable. I thought they were super, super helpful to, firstly for that chemistry aspect, but actually more importantly to understand our characters a little bit more to kind of get into the brains of that. And um, yeah, kind of just understand not only how we would work as a cast, but also how we would work with um, Aros, our wonderful director, and Alice, our writer, and you know, just the whole kind of team in general. Um, but I think I would actually say that we were quite lucky in the sense that Heartstopper very much follows the blossoming relationship that we use. You see it right at the very beginning uh, when they, they don't really know each other. Uh, right. And we were able to, as we shot it in a pretty much chronological order, um, give or take. Uh, it was it, it was pretty chronological. We were able to really kind of develop our relationship while we were shooting um, and just get closer and closer as our characters got closer, which was really, really very convenient it for was. our on-screen uh, on screen chemistry. <laughs> uh, yeah, it was great. Yeah, I mean, and also I think one of the only benefits of filming during COVID was that production didn't really want us to mix with people outside of the production and so yeah. we'd spend all our weekends as a cast together as well as all our days on set so we sort of bonded really quickly but I'm yeah those two weeks rehearsal were especially for for me and some of the other cast who hadn't been on on a set before to just have like time to sort of ease into it rather than start straight away was really great and also having old pros like Kit was very helpful. Mm -hmm. That's <laughs> Uh, you know, one of the most striking things about the show to me is it, uh, to me, it feels authentic to your ages, like the voice of the show, the sensibility of the show. A lot of times if I'm watching, you know, you can watch a movie or a show about younger characters where it just feels like you can tell it was like some 50 year old guy wrote the script and it's it's like, this is what life is like for young people as seen through the, the mentality of, of somebody much older. And with this show, I don't know, it just felt like, I mean, this is a testament, I think, to Alice's writing, but also to the performance of the whole cast, that it really feels authentic and lived in and, and genuine. And I'm curious, could you talk a little bit about that and, and also sort of how you worked with Alice on the, the moving this from the graphic novel to, you know, to the from the comics to the screen? I mean, I think most of the kudos for that goes to Alice and her amazing skill at putting words on the page and I think mm -hmm. what's so great about having a graphic novel as your source material is that you have like you have shots already and our director would re very often have the script on one side of his iPad and the corresponding comic page on the other side and more often than not lots of the shots are exact replicas of the panels in the comic and I mean it's great as an actor to have a visual representation of what you're trying to do um but I, I think Alice is just a genius and that's, that's yeah. Yeah. Um, I, I also, the other thing that struck me when I first watched it was, I, and this just reflects on me, but as I was watching it, you know, the first couple episodes, I was like, I immediately captivated one over and then I'm watching more and I'm like, oh no, it's like, things are about to get very dark. This is going to take a turn. There's going to be like, horrible violence or abuse or something, you know, and it never happens. I mean, there is serious conflict and there's there's serious issues there, but there's a sense of joy and lightness to the entire thing that is really beautiful and unexpected. And it it really, it felt, it did not feel phony. It felt, it felt earned and real, but 
very unusual. And I was curious, is that something that you were aware of as you were making it? Is something that you all talked about? I think that it's something that is obviously a, a very big element of Heartstopper. And I think it, in many ways, it's kind of a selling point and, and something that um, separates it from other stories, especially queer stories, because uh, queer media is so highly saturated with sort of, um, you know, negative, dark, um, heavy stories. Uh, and it's kind of very, very refreshing to have a, a story that is just positive and looks at the positives of, you know, the bright sides of life. Um, and I think that, you know, it, there'll be certain things that I wasn't really aware of in, in, in shooting, but, you know, a lot of the reactions to, for example, one of the most iconic moments in the, in the comics and in the, in the show itself is Nick and Charlie's first kiss. Um, and you do find that, I found that a lot of, you know, people who I knew who were reacting to that, um, were almost shocked that right before they sort of leaned in, like right before they, you know, their their lips touched, someone didn't burst in the door and stop them. Um, mm. Because that's, I think, become quite a common trope, especially in queer media, that they kind of, you know, that, that two men aren't even allowed to kind of, aren't even allowed to kiss, especially not the first time they try to. Um, and that, kind of is one of the first times where you realize oh okay this this is just going to let this relationship play you know um it isn't gonna you know it's not that we don't have conflict in the show and it's not that we don't have um hurdles and obstacles for the um for the characters to kind of you know work around but it it does also embrace the fact that it's two teenagers in love and you know they are figuring everything out and and it's very beautiful in that way, I think, um, that it just kind of lets the, the, the way things naturally want to happen, happen, uh, which I think is lovely. Yeah, absolutely. Uh, and Kiss, sorry, go ahead, Jeff. I was just gonna say, Kiss, just put a perfect egg. Don't actually think I've got anything to add. It's just... <laughs> I mean, related to that, I was also thinking about the way the character um, L played by Yasmin Finney was introduced. Like it's almost not commented on. It's like, this is a transgendered girl. It's just sort of introduced naturally without commentary and was just handled beautifully in the show in a way that you really don't, I mean, it's off, usually made much more of a point about it. There's some right more dramatic or traumatic storyline associated with it. And the way she she's introduced was really, um, Unexpected and beautiful. Yeah. And yeah. I think it's as it as it should be. I think it's it's a, yeah. you know, uh, I think Elle's story is a beautiful story. Um, and I think that uh, trans stories always, you know, need to be told. Um, but I think that it's, yeah, I think the way that, that, that Alice wrote Elle's story and the story between Tao and Elle is, is beautiful and yeah, nuanced. So Joe, I would love to hear you talk a little bit about your experience. So this is like your first, you'd obviously acted before, but, yes. uh, but this was your first on camera and first professional role. What was that? It would sort of just talk us through a little bit about sort of how you got into that and what, you know, what, what your experience was starting out in that. Yeah, I mean, I think knowing absolutely nothing about this world helped because it meant that I wasn't worrying about anything because I didn't have any idea what to worry about um and also it was it was nice quite a few of the main cast it was our first on-screen roles and so we had a nice like bond because of that and we could like oh it's fine I hope he also doesn't know what he's doing so it's fine so I'm not the only one and I think I I knew I personally can see the scenes that we filmed at the start of the shoot versus the end of the shoot just by like how comfortable we are and how I mean that's just me being picky about myself and what am I acting but I think I found it quite easier to get into the role because me and Charlie are so similar and to have my first on-screen role as someone who I can relate to so much and can embody so much of myself in I think gave me quite an easier ride mm-hmm 
Well, it's, I, I just have to say it's amazing. Like it was such a great ensemble and everyone felt like a cohesive group of friends. I mean, the different groups, right? It, it, they were all believable and everybody was acting with like at a really high level, right? That these are great performances across the board. And actually the first time I watched the show, I didn't know it was your first time acting. And then I went back and looked you up and I was like, oh my God, that's kind of amazing. Um, but um, yeah, it's, it's beautiful work. Um, another thing I wanted to ask about the, thematically with the show that I thought was really interesting is, and it's not done like in a heavy overt way, but it does feel like it runs throughout the whole show is the, the sh like dealing with mental health issues or kind of like, you know, the level of isolation, anxiety, the things that these kids are going through in a really, um, I, I don't know, honest, but not heavy handed way. And I'm curious if that was something that you talked about with Alice or the director, um, as, as you were prepping the shoot. Yeah, I, I mean, especially Charlie's character, he suffers with his mental health and he has issues that happened to in, in his past, which still are with him in when we meet him in the series. And I think what I love so much about our show is that we don't hide away from these issues that teenagers go through and people go through in their daily lives, but you always, no matter what happens in the show, you always know it's gonna be okay. And I think that that is something that is such a there's a lack of in our media, because in all the TV dramas and film dramas today, you want to create suspense and drama. And you do that by making these scenarios in which the characters are suffering. But what Heartstopper does is it creates those scenarios and creates the drama. But you you know, it's going to be OK. You know, Charlie's going to be OK in the end of it. And, you know, Nick and Charlie are, are always going to be together. So it makes for an, an both an easier watch, but also um quite important watch for like teenagers who might be going through similar things and yeah I just I love that part of it mm -hmm. yeah. yeah I think it's a really a really positive portrayal of life in general um and mental health is something that a lot of people uh teens teen and also I think the thing is with teens um are often sort of undermined uh and treated very much as as children uh and their sort of mental health can be you know often kind of understated by people and 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 you know it's just hormones or it's just this it's just that and really it, it can be an extraordinarily difficult part of a person's life is their teenage years because you have so many you know different new emotions happening and 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 I think Charlie is a prime example. I think Nick, you see, you see things sort of actual, like sort of pretty much not traumatic events, but you see things happening in his life that that really do sort of mess with his mental health and um, mess with the way that he sees himself and his life. And uh, I think that that's something that Hartsuber does handle beautifully because it's you know very very subtly written by Alice um and but still very positively and very as joe said you know that everything's going to be okay at the end of the day and that's um i think it's important for people especially people who are going through tough times to see a show where people who are like them or even not like them uh but just people who are sort of going through tough times as well but there's a, a sense of hope mm -hmm. Yeah, absolutely. I, I I I think that probably had something to do with why the show was so powerful for so many people, and it still is, right? I mean, it came out at a time when a lot of people in very different circumstances were dealing with hard times from the pandemic, from everything else. And this was like, I don't know, it, it, it was a real positive experience to spend time with with your characters um kit i also wanted to talk about your relationship with olivia coleman playing your mom i love those scenes of the two of you together and if you could talk about that i mean it's some of the most moving moments are just these like the way she responds to you when you open up to her and things it's just so profoundly moving and, and great to see on screen Thank you. It's, uh, you know, it's, it will forever be an honor to be able to act with someone of, of Olivia's sort of caliber, um, but also just to be, act, uh, be acting with someone who is 
as wonderful as she is. She is such a gorgeous human being and uh, a gorgeous actor as well. Um, yeah, she is extraordinary to work with. She's so effortless. It doesn't feel like she's trying. Um, it just feels like she sort of will read a scene and, you know, you know, she might take a bit of direction, she might take this, that, but she understands exactly what's going on, exactly how that character is feeling uh, and can just portray it so effortlessly and so subtly. Um, and it's so impressive to be in the room and see her do it because, you know, she can literally just bring, I mean, it's cliche, but, you know, bring the words to life. Uh, we only had about two days to shoot with her on season one uh, and it was... Wow it was packed you know there, there aren't that many scenes really with uh with Olivia in season one but but we really did pack everything into those two days and we did it tactically we did all the sort of light-hearted stuff on the first day and then got into the heavier stuff so I had about a day to sort of form this this you know this this relationship with her and, and have some chemistry uh of you know sort of of son and mother but yeah she didn't it, I was terrified. I thought it was going to be extraordinarily difficult, and it was in many ways to sort of keep up with her. But at the same time, I find acting with someone of her caliber, you do just, you do just find yourself trying to trying to get up there and, and keep mm -hmm. up. Uh, and I think it was really, um, yeah, it was a really wonderful two days of shooting. And I was so happy with with the final result of of that that final scene, especially it was the scene that I really wanted to get right, and I was really hoping that we would be able to get it right. And yeah, the reaction's been beautiful, really touching, and exactly what we wanted. And yeah, I think that it was really a lovely ending to the to a to a lovely show. Yeah, absolutely. Um, well, I'm not sure how to frame my last my next question, but it really has to do with, I'm curious how, and if you don't want to answer this, this is fine, but my question is really about sort of the reception of the show. And I mean, you're both like, I mean, Kit, you have more experience and you've been acting since you were much younger, but still you're like, you're young performers and this show just blew up and impacted so many people. And I'm curious sort of, I don't know just how that experience was for you both seeing how people responded to it and the, the, the kind of positive re reception it got I'm sure was lovely for both of you but just like I don't know anything you can share about your experience of suddenly being in the limelight in that way and having to deal with that and sort of whatever you know the positives and negatives of that coming off this show I don't know how to describe it it's very strange um amazing overwhelming like i'm so proud of our show and what we've created as a huge group of people um and it's so great that it's managed to reach far more people than we ever ever expected it to um but it's been a weird couple of months and yeah. yeah that's great yeah i think it's um it's deeply overwhelming in many ways and in, in, in positive ways and negative ways. You know, you see, uh, I've seen some absolutely, you know, just incredible reactions to the show and meeting people and, and hearing the way that they've been impacted by it and by certain scenes and by that, that final scene with Olivia um, and, you know, some gorgeous scenes that Joe did. You know, there's a gorgeous scene with Joe and, um, and, and Jenny who plays, Tori's sister, um, where they discuss his mental health, and it's you know beautifully acted, and it's beautifully written, and it's you know it's it's, it's I cried when I when I first saw it, um, and yeah, but at the same time, you do we are both still, you know, I, I think in some ways we're we're mature for our age, but in some ways we're still just kids, and and it's terrifying being in the big bad world uh, with a lot of eyes on you. Uh, and you feel like everything you do uh, is a mistake, and that's that's it's, it's you know it's heavy for a for an eighteen and, and nineteen year old. Um, but I would say that you can never. It's it's always been my dream to be an actor. 
uh, and I think that some things come with that that are you know not 100% ideal but but you know you have to ask yourself is it worth that dream and and I've always wanted to to be able to do this and 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 I you know it's still my favorite thing to do is to be able to to bring things to life on screen and and on on stage and I think that I feel extraordinarily lucky to be able to do that so yeah that's that's great well, so I know you're, you probably can't talk about this, but I'll, I'll ask anyway. Um, I know you're, you're in production on season two. Is there anything you can share about it? So, does it cover the sort of volume two of the, the, the next phase of the graphic novel or wh whatever you can share? Um, and, and when is it, and do you know when it's coming out? I don't know what we can say. What do you want to share, Joe? Yeah, what do you want to share? That's the because I'm always the one told off. I always get told off. Um, <laughs> <laughs> it's based on comics so yeah if you can get an educated guess from that great yeah. yeah um it's it's very excited and you know people should be excited for it and we we've had a lot of fun making it we've we've put our you know we're absolutely exhausted we're putting <laughs> our sort of our blood sweat and tears into it and yeah uh we're all desperately hoping that people like it as much as, as season one Great. Well, I, you know, I have to say, I, I didn't, I wasn't familiar with the comic before the show. And so I, I went back and have read most of it. And it's, I mean, I didn't know Alice Oseman's work before this and she's amazing. So mm -hmm. very excited to see whatever the, the new season is going to be. And um, really, thank you both so much for doing this, for talking with Film Independent and um, congrats on a fantastic show. And um Wishing you both great holidays and a, and a nice break after you wrap. Thank, Thank you, you so much. It's been a pleasure. And as, same to you. Yeah. Thanks so much. Bye bye. Thanks. Thank you. Thank you.